and good evening. Welcome to our uh, Sunday night service. Let's stand together. Let's turn in our hymn book to 354, 354. What a fellowship. What a fellowship. It's good to see you back tonight. Looking forward to what the Lord has for us. I'm going to have Mr. Ellison, would you come down here and open us up in prayer, sir? Good evening. Welcome, Maranatha Baptist Church. Let's pray. Just want to thank you, Lord, for just the great day you've given us, Lord, for uh, speaking to us through the two morning services, Lord. I pray that you would uh, use pastor tonight, Lord, and help us to listen for your voice and for what you have for us tonight, Lord. I just want to pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's all be seated. And uh, we are thankful for each and every one of you. We're going to share a few quick announcements and just continue with the service. Uh, summer Children's Ministries, we are uh, right in the middle of it. Can you believe it's already, it's it's June, isn't it? It sure is. And and uh, June 8th at 6.30, the youth will be hosting another, oh, this is, this is the, uh, I didn't only think I mentioned that, I, I, we mentioned it a couple of times, but we're going to say it again, we do have a movie night coming up, and that is June 8th at 6.30, and uh, $5 for that, and I, and I kind of blended that in with the uh, Summer Children's Ministries, uh, Summer Children's Ministry is uh, the ministry that focuses on 
uh, getting some of our people involved in ministry that might not be able to be committed all year long, but they can commit to a few weeks during the summer or a lot of weeks during the summer, whatever might, uh, you know, fit for you. And we do have a sign-up sheet in the foyer. Those of you who are familiar with this, you already know what it's all about. But we're also excited about maybe some of our new people uh, getting on board and learning more about this. And I'd be happy to talk to you about it. If you have any questions whatsoever, love to see people get plugged in. I know that some of our people will be able to pick up uh, four or five weeks and, and serve in this area. This, of course, uh, continues ministry. Uh, Awana gets a chance to take a break, uh, but we still have church and we still have kids, and so we want to make sure that we're uh, providing for them. Montana Mission Trip, I know you're praying. Right around the corner, uh, there is a meeting that is a critical meeting. want to make sure we get everybody there. That's June 10th following the morning service. And then, of course, we got to see one of our graduates of Faith Bible Institute, uh, Dora, uh, this morning. We'd like to see some more graduates in just a few years. And we need to uh, start uh, seeing some of our new people Maybe take a, a good look at Faith Bible Institute. We have Doctrine of Angels. Uh, doing one of the electives is a great way to learn a little bit about how it's all set up and what we do. And uh, would encourage you to, to get on board with this. You, As we mentioned this morning, uh, it's $35 uh, per person, $60 per couple. And uh, we, uh, we will be meeting on the 30th uh, and August 6th. And so see Henry or Sheila and get plugged in. Be here for that. I, it'll be a blessing, I guarantee you. I know some of our people who, who started out by doing an elective, and then they decided, I'm going to come back for uh, the next semester and get started. Uh, also, uh, those who are in Bible Institute that get a number of electives in will be able to work towards an advanced Bible diploma. And it's just your way of saying, you know what, I just want to commit to my Bible study and, I, and I'm going to take advantage of this wonderful help. Great resource for sure. Amen. Vacation Bible School, uh, again, uh, June 18th through 22nd, already now just a couple of weeks away. This is when Anita gets really, really, really stressed. I'm just saying, pray for her. <laughs> Because now it's all getting ready to come together. A lot of stuff still needs to happen before it all happens. And so be praying for VBS and make sure you're doing your part in this important ministry. Amen? All right, let's continue the service. Open, if you would, please, to 350 350. 350.
Amen. Stand if you would one more time before we collect the offering. Turn if you would to uh, page number 495, 495. Brother Benny, would you look to the Lord for us, please? Let's pray. Almost Christian Heavenly Father, we come to your house this evening, giving you all the praise and all the glory, Lord. Thanking you for your Son, for your Word, for our salvation. Now, Lord, fill our pastor with the Holy Spirit, Lord, as he brings your message to us this evening, Lord. Now that we pick up this offering, Lord, we pray that you'll multiply it and be used for your ministry. We pray all this in your Son's precious holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.
hear the sound of a rushing mighty wind, and it's closer now than it's ever been. I can almost hear the trumpets as Gabriel sounds the call. At the midnight cry, we'll be going home. When Jesus steps down on a cloud to call his children, the dead in Christ shall rise to meet him in the air. And then those that remain shall be quickly changed at the midnight cry when Jesus comes again. I look around me, I see prophecies fulfilled and the signs of the times they're appearing everywhere. I can almost hear the Father as he says, son, get your children. At the midnight cry, the bride of Christ will rise when Jesus steps down on a cloud to call his children. The dead in Christ shall rise to meet him in the air. And then those that remain shall be quickly changed at the midnight cry when Jesus comes again. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother Daniel. What a blessing. I just wonder where he uh, practices all that. I'm going to call his mother in here and ask if she listens from the shower while he's practicing because he, he surprises me. He just gets up here and sings from memory like that. And what a blessing. What a blessing. Thankful for uh, our men and women here who uh, take these gifts that God has given them and they then use them for the glory of the Lord. Amen. So if he ever becomes a famous, you know, celebrity, we're going we're gonna to tell him we know where you all got started. Amen? <laughs> Genesis. Genesis chapter 41. Genesis chapter 41. We are going to continue to look at the life of a man whose example speaks to us clearly today, no doubt about it. Genesis 41, and we're going to begin, this is a long chapter, but we're going to begin at verse 37. We don't mind reading a little bit of scripture around here, amen, for sure. Genesis 41, beginning at verse 37. And the king, and, and, and the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of all his servants, and Pharaoh said, Unto his servants, Can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, For as much as God hath showed thee all this, 
There is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house. And according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had. And they cried before him, Bow the knee, and he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot, in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zephnapaaniah. How about that? Would have been easier if he just kept the name Joseph, amen? And he gave him uh, to wife Asenath, the daughter of Pothipharah, priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. Father, we do thank you. We praise you. We give you all glory tonight as we look back at amazing scripture that, that in a very real way brings us right into the 21st century with all the opportunities that Christians have to be a witness uh, in the workplace, in, of course, uh, school, yes, in the home with extended family especially, and even, yes, Lord, in politics, uh, we have a handbook. We have an example. We have a man who demonstrates when we walk with the Lord that our trust can truly be in the Lord. And so, Lord, speak uh, to each and every one of us. And maybe it would be better if we were to just say, Lord, we pray that we would just give you free reign with us tonight, that we would allow uh, Holy Spirit of God, you to have your way. And yes, Lord, let us ask for examination. Let us pray for change in every, in any area uh, that you want to speak to us about. We pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Notice again, Genesis 41. Look with me at verse 41. Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. Joseph had experienced 13 difficult years. He had been a victim of his brother's evil design and had been cast into a pit. From the pit, he became a slave to Potiphar's, uh, in Potiphar's house. Through the deceit and craft of Potiphar's wife, he was cast into prison. While in prison, he interpreted the dreams of the king's brother and baker, or king's butler, rather, and baker. But when the butler was set free, he forgot about Joseph. Boy, you just got to keep track regarding who's on first, amen? These events happened when Joseph was in the bloom of young manhood. Most young men would have ended in despair, uh, but Joseph kept on serving. He served his father obediently, Potiphar's house faithfully, the prison keeper and the prisoners loyally. 
in this manner, Joseph really was serving God and learning obedience through suffering. At this point in Joseph's life, the, the clouds began to pass away. The sunshine appeared. And in the midst of uh, and, and in the midst there was a, a rainbow. After humiliation came exaltation. You say, this sounds a whole lot like my life in a lot of ways. That's why we look to the scriptures and we look to men and women of God that, they, that by their example give us direction and instruction in how we might look to him. From the darkness of the dungeon, Joseph moves suddenly uh, to, to the delights of the palace. Has, has there ever been in all history another who moved suddenly from prison to prime minister? You see, God himself enabled Joseph to, to suddenly emerge from the storm into the sunshine. Joseph's sudden promotion was no accident. Certain factors in his life led to this moment of exaltation. So let's do this. Let's look at these factors now. And let's be careful to hear from the Lord tonight regarding how we might emulate Joseph in times of, of difficulty and even, yes, exaltation. How many of us know of situations where Christians did actually better when they were under the fire, when they were going through a difficult time, and then they began to relax and just kind of think too highly of themselves when things started to go better? <laughs> you know, the biggest mistake that we can make as Christians is start to believe all the nice things that somebody might be saying about us. Amen? I'm telling you. So, number one, please notice, Joseph knew that God was in control of his creation. He knew that God gave the answer. Look, uh, Genesis 41, 16. God shall give Pharaoh an answer. I, I just take the Bible, literally, don't you? God shall give Pharaoh an answer. People have sought answers to their problems through various media throughout the centuries. Through science and technology, education and learning, wealth and possessions. None of these can offer all the answers, that's for sure. We're not against these things, but we're surely not going to rely on any of these areas of our life. For real answers, God, unfortunately, is usually the last resort for people searching for answers to their problems. I'm sorry, but if you're chasing after Oprah or Dr. Phil, you're headed in the wrong direction. Amen? Amen. I want to see your TV guide. Oh, they don't even make those anymore, do they? I don't know. He knew that God... Revealed himself and his ways to man. God hath showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. We see this in verse 25. There is hardly a more sublime fact in the Bible than the truth that God reveals himself and his ways to us. He does. Just as he did back then, he speaks to us today. His self-disclosure is uh, an evidence of his love and concern for his creation. God is a very active, involved God, no doubt. Uh, he is knowable. I like that. He is knowable. And his desire for us is that we might know him. And this ought to be an ongoing, growing work in our lives until we step on the other side of eternity. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, 
is the true revelation. And all who see him see the Father. Amen? When you have seen me, you have seen the Father. If God is knowable, he is personal. You want to know what's missing in, well, beyond so much more in all of these cults and isms out here? And even so-called mainline religions, a knowable personal God. It's, it's so true. You talk to anyone who's wrapped up in the cult of Islam, and you're going to talk to somebody who knows of a, of a far-off, uh, harsh God, not the God of the Bible, I can tell you for sure. He knew that God was able and would accomplish his purposes. Verse 32, it is because the thing is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. I love that. Skeptics often question the power and authority of God. In the case of Egypt, God had ordained seven years of plenty and seven years of drought. He would surely bring it to pass. I'll tell you, one of the very important truths that we learn early on in our walk and relationship with the Lord is what he says he means and what he says he will do, he will do it. <laughs> he will do it. The shadows in Joseph's life now began to turn to sunshine. And I like that when that happens in my life. I like the upward uh, turn rather than the downward turn. But the downward turn is, is, is needed or you'll never be able to appreciate the upward turn. Amen? It's wonderful to live on the mountaintop, especially if you've come from the valley. You see, he understood that God provides the answers. God makes himself personally known. Often people say that you don't really learn of a personal relationship in the Old Testament, and that's just not true. That has to come from somebody who's not reading this account for sure. You would, uh, you would be remiss if you didn't take time and study the whole Bible. And I can tell you that God would bring to pass that which he had purposed. And you know, as we pray and as we look to the Lord, that's the way we ought to pray. As you purpose, Lord. These are the truths that provide foundation. These are the truths that, that give assurance. And they enable us to live in victory. The victorious Christian life is simply placing all of your trust in the Lord and leaving it there. <laughs> That's the hard part, right? We, uh, we give it to the Lord and then we take it back. Well, Lord, it doesn't seem like you really had my priorities right. Oh, yes, he does. He sure does. But we'll pull it back. We'll take it back. And we do that all the time, don't we? Notice, secondly, tonight, Joseph's inner and personal life honored and pleased God. I am challenged by Joseph. I would want that this would be read during my epitaph, if you will. I don't want it to happen right away, but I'm just saying. Notice, he was filled and possessed by the Spirit of God. Verse 38 can we find such a one as this is? A man in whom the Spirit of God is? You know, it's amazing that a pagan ruler and his servants would recognize this. That's why this truly, uh, it, this, this entire block of scripture brings us right into the 21st century. You know, sometimes we Christians kind of hide our heads. Well, I just want to work for a Christian man. And by the way, the Bible is very clear about who we should be doing business with when you have a choice about who you're going to do business with. But what a testimony it is when a man of God, a woman of God, 
is able to bring the light of the Lord into a dark place. And yes, people see that. You see, the most telling and revealing aspect of our lives is that, is that which comes from within. The filling of the Spirit is for the purpose of enabling us to give witness to our Lord. Even Pharaoh and his servants became aware of the mighty acts of God through Joseph's Spirit-filled life. They actually could hear that song, I saw, or sing it, I saw Jesus in you. Joseph knew that, that God had given him the wisdom to interpret dreams and, and thus reveal the purposes of the Almighty God. But it is, it is most convincing that, that Pharaoh himself testified that God hath showed thee all this. He knew where this remarkable act that Joseph involved himself in came from. Because Joseph was filled with the Spirit of God. Pharaoh saw that which is that which was good. May I ask you a question? Do people see that which is good in our lives? The Spirit indeed produces and brings forth that which is good. That's called leading a Spirit-filled life. Choosing to walk in the Spirit and not in the flesh. This is an ongoing work that we, we must recognize is about being a witness. You see, when a Joseph-lived life has opportunity to tell someone about Jesus... People are ready to listen. Your witness and your testimony, your work ethic, your standards, they speak volumes. And when you are able to say, quit looking at me, look past me, and look to the one who I give praise and glory, they're able to say, I see this God that you're talking about. I see how he is revealed in your life. Look with me. He was discreet and wise. What great language that is. Wouldn't you love for any of us, our children, to be thought of that way? He was discreet and wise. Look at verse 39. There is none so discreet and wise as thou art. You see, he didn't have to have a t-shirt or tell somebody he was. And there's nothing wrong with a t-shirt. I love witnessing t-shirts. Brother Benny wears them when we go out door knocking. And I just tell him, what do you do? Just walk up to the door and stick your chest out? <laughs> hey, if it works, amen? The source of all true wisdom is God. Let's look at some scripture that reminds us of that. Notice Proverbs. That's somewhere in the middle of your Bible, right? Let's go to the middle of our Bible. Proverbs chapter 1, look with me, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools, I love it, that's when you're allowed to say that word, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Look at Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Let's say it again. And the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Where does this type of a heart and spirit come from? It comes from the Lord, no doubt. James. James chapter 3.
Look with me, verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. You want to know what will completely, completely mold and, and guide and control you? Someone who is giving the Holy Spirit free reign. You see, our, our, our personalities are our personalities. But our bent is when we let the Lord take a hold of who he has made us to be, how he has wired us, and allows for the Holy Spirit to work in us. Amen? Why was Joseph wise? Why? Uh, it's because of, it, it, you know, his educational advantage in Egypt. No. There's only really one answer. He was a man in whom the Spirit of the Lord resided. He had the Spirit of God. He was referred to as one who had the Spirit of God by people who were not even, uh, these, these were, this was the world observing him. You know, we're wise when our lives are controlled by the Holy Spirit. You hear preachers say that, but it really is true. It's so true. He became a, a worthy leader and ruler. Thou shalt be ruler over my house, verse 40. God will never permit his creation to be dominated by evil. Though evil's present, uh, it is the righteous who will inherit the earth. That's what I read. The inner qualities of Joseph's life qualified him to be a wise and discreet leader. The son, so long as obscured by conspiracy, slavery, imprisonment, and forgetfulness, now begins to shine. What do you think might happen if a man of God, a woman of God, takes a position in a godless world and stands for God? I'll tell you what will happen. Souls will be saved. Lives will be changed. Hearts will be changed. Let's stop thinking that we're supposed to corner ourselves somewhere and, and let the world be the world. We're supposed, we're supposed to turn this world upside down. That's our job. That's our role. That's what missions is all about. But that's what, that's what evangelism, personal evangelism is all about for all of us. It's kind of sad when some people lead these compartmental lives and people at work don't even know of the Jesus whom they say they know. Thirdly tonight, Joseph's circumstances reveal the sunshine. You know, he has stayed faithful through the tough times, hasn't he? And through the difficult times. He was in authority over Egypt. I, I got to tell you something. That makes you the most, well, he, even as the scripture says, was the second most powerful man in the world. I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. I mean, what a, what a change in circumstances from uh, his past 13 years. One day, Joseph was in prison. He was an inmate. Now he was in authority over all of Egypt. Uh, it, is, it is even as the man of God said to Eli, the priest, in 1 Samuel 2, verse 30, them that honor me will I honor, or I will honor. And that speaks to you and I today. He was arrayed, I, 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 this here, you could break down and preach for a long, long time on, but I'm going to move quickly here. He was arrayed with kingly adornments. We read this, don't we? Look at verse 42. Verse 42. 
And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, put it upon Joseph's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. Some people really perk up when they see the gold chain part. <laughs> a ring. His hand signified his authority. That's what a ring does. The linen on his body signified his identity. And a chain on his neck signified, are we using this, pulpit, this mic? Signified royalty. You see, all of this imagery mattered. It spoke to the authority that he had been given. He was given preeminence. Verse 43. And he made him to ride in the second chariot. That's pretty, that's pretty neat, I just got to say. You know, Pharaoh's got two chariots. I don't have one. He's got two, all right? It's kind of like, you know, you've got that Bentley and that Mercedes in the front yard. I'm going to let you go ahead and you, you, you take the, which one do you want? <laughs> Church split over whether it ought to be the Bentley or the Mercedes, right? Hey, this was truly an act that demonstrated Pharaoh's trust in Joseph. The clouds now give way to sunshine. I'm telling you, life is getting pretty good now. Uh, we have heard it said that, that might makes right. But in this case, it was right makes might. Do the right thing and watch what the Lord will do. And even if he doesn't, you're going to be thankful that you did the right thing. See, some people will, will make the right decision and stand for the Lord and might possibly, well, let's just look back at Joseph's life. Be thrown into prison. But until you're on the other side of eternity, the story hasn't been written for you and I. Joseph's performance reveals the sunshine. Two things are prominent during the next 14 years. Joseph gathered up food for storage during the seven years of abundance. And during the following seven years, he dispensed the food to drought-stricken Egyptians. Oh, by the way, Newsflash, if you're a born-again Christian, the Lord does speak to you. And, and if you are in a position of authority, your decision-making is based on what the Lord says. That may not get you elected in the 21st century, but that's what is the truth. Amen? He made right decisions for Egyptians because he was trusting the Lord. God's wise servants will always need to store up before they can give out. This is a reminder that for you and I, we can only impart that which we have received. The Apostle Paul recognized this principle when he wrote to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 15.3, I delivered unto you the first of all, that which I also received. You see, his desire for the Roman Christians was that he might impart to them some spiritual gift. You can't impart spiritual gifts unless you have some to impart. But you know what? What we store up in the plenteous years makes us adequate for the lean years. I remember it was 2007. The economy looked pretty good, didn't it? Some of us were really on the mountaintop. You looked around, and we had been in the valley for a few years, and we were watching, we were watching subdivisions built overnight. And it was amazing how financially, the country couldn't be any stronger than it was. You could get a loan, 
uh, there was some pretty creative financing going on at the time. Uh, you could have even been a, a, you know, a drug smuggler, and they would have figured out a way to get you. Now, I'm not a drug smuggler. I don't know anything about that, but I know that that could be the case. And then what happened in 2008? Anybody remember what happened? The whole bottom fell out. The economy just went totally south. Suddenly, there were all kinds of houses that were not finished, and others who found themselves defaulting on loans, and it got pretty tough. Well, it got tough for, it got tough for the church who would be already budgeting for what seemed to be possibly just another great year like several years before that. And suddenly, the church was in a situation where they had to get pretty lean. And I'm talking about local churches who, who, who biblically recognize that the giving of your first fruit to the local church is how God chooses uh, to empower that church to be able to do ministries and to do many of the things that uh, the Lord would have them to do. And so we see that Joseph's life, just much like our life, is going to have times of up and downs, but it will also affect entire ministries. It will affect entire, uh, you know, groups. It's wise. It's prudent. It's right to, to use good sense, common sense. Prepare for the tough times. Amen? Prepare for the difficult times. Don't, don't use up everything Make sure that you're truly listening to the Lord when it comes to this important truth, but, but watch what the Lord will do. And you know what? Joseph's life was blessed. I mean, look at what happens again. In Egypt, Joseph uh, went to work using the direction and guidance of the Lord uh, to minister. Uh, and I say minister because when you minister to, to someone's physical needs, it opens the door for spiritual ministry to take place. You know what? For you and I, we're reminded that there will be good times. There'll be mountaintop opportunities, but there will be valleys. And our right decisions are always going to be our right decisions because they're not based on, on circumstances. They're not going to be based on what might happen, how things might go. Joseph's faith in the Lord plus the reality that, that the Lord truly is on the throne and in control is what ought to factor in our, our decisions. Through the tough times, through the drought, through the sunshine, let's do what Joseph did. Let's, let's recognize that in the midst of exaltation and promotion, uh, who knows, the next day it might all come crashing down. I know of people in ministry who never thought that that, in fact, could be the case. And they had a tough time when suddenly the unbelievable might take place. I know of men who are no longer serving as pastor, no longer uh, really doing maybe much more than attending a church, possibly somewhere, who, who have been pretty well beat up. I know people on the mission field, missionaries who have come back from the mission field, mission field who were pretty well beat up. You know what? We want the story to be written this way for us, don't we? No matter what, I'm just going to serve the Lord. No matter what, I'm just going to trust the Lord. And I'm going to make sure my decisions are based on what the Lord has to say and what the Lord wants to do. Amen? Amen. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord. And we thank you for your word. We're reminded of, of what real stewardship is. That means that it's all yours. And so what we do in everything we do, we want to be faithful. Help us, Lord. Help us to recognize that in times of despair, we need to be faithful. In times where things are going really good, Yes, we need to be faithful. We have seen people fall away in both instances, in both circumstances. Sometimes when there's something going on in our life, we seem to kind of disappear and hide from God's people. And, 
and yes, fellowshipping and hearing and sitting under the word of God. Let it not be, let us not be thought of as, as fair weather Christians or, or those who cut and run when things get tough. And at the same time, let us not be so comforted by those mountaintops that we forget that you don't stay on a mountaintop. Have your way with us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Open, if you would, to please, to 418-418-418.